Hello all, this is Halloween, and today we will be recreating Andy Warhol's silkscreen Marilyn Monroe. Let's get started. Here she is. You don't need a lot for Andy Warhol's Marilyn Monroe. You need a red dress. If you choose to wear pantyhose just so that you don't have to paint as much. I bought these on eBay for, I don't know, probably about 10 bucks. I don't remember exactly how much I paid for them, but they're never very expensive. You can find any color you want. And I usually use pantyhose to cheat when I have to otherwise do a lot of body painting. So that's why I bought those. I bought the perfect red dress. Now, let me tell you something. I went to the thrift store in search of a dress like this, just a halter dress, a red halter dress. And I found one and it would have been perfect, but it was a small and I haven't been small since like kindergarten. It wasn't gonna work. I ended up having to look online. There are a lot of options when it comes to red halter dresses. This is not the most, the cheapest one that I bought but I just I loved it and I thought it was it is perfect and it comes in all different colors now I got this on Etsy but I think I got duped because I paid $89 for it that said you do not have to pay that much you can get pretty much any red halter dress and like I said as long as you're doing the makeup right and um, everything else looks good it's it's gonna pass you know they have them going anywhere from you know $15 and up so you can get any red halter dress I wanted this one because it's the Marilyn Monroe dress now like I said they have this in all different colors they even have the classic white it's that slinky lightweight cool material but I think I got duped because I paid $89 for this one and look at the tag $84 marked down to 42 so if you do go with Etsy look at the tag when you receive your order and see if that it doesn't say that because you might be able to get some of your money back. <laughs> I did not, and I ordered this like a month ago, so. But anyway, it's a pretty dress. It's something nice to keep just for anything, any occasion anyway. So I don't mind having spent a little more on the dress. It's the one that I wanted, so I got it. That's, you don't have to do that. You might recognize this wig from when we did the Pop Art Girl. This is a pop art wig. It's the same wig. I cut and styled it. You can curl hair, um, a synthetic wig. You just have to do it on low heat. In the Warhol, the classic Warhol Marilyn photos, her hair was shorter. So I wanted the wig to be shorter. I've already done the pop art girl costume a couple of times, so I, I may not be doing that again. So I went ahead and cut the wig. If I ever wanna do pop art girl again, I'll probably just use a different wig. You can pretty much use any color. So it worked out well. It's the perfect style that I wanted. For shoes, I just got these from the thrift store and they were actually in great condition. I was looking for more of a vintage red cage style high heel shoe, but red pumps will do. And I only paid 10 bucks for them. This is a very versatile costume as far as, you can look at the different Marilyns. You can pretty much do any color dress, any color flesh tone, you know, the silk screen. And I'm gonna show some examples of that. We're all different colors. so. It kind of doesn't matter what color you choose to do. You may have a dress like this that looks similar to this at home, but maybe it's purple or pink and you can totally use that. So just think outside the box, try to consider all of your options before going and spending a fair amount of money on, on a dress or something. That's the costume. Let's go ahead and get started on our makeup. It's makeup time, yay. For this particular version of Andy Warhol's Marilyn Monroe. I do the, uh, where she has kind of like a lavender skin. I did that because I had lavender. Uh, I've done this costume before, and I did that one because I already had the lavender, and so I went ahead and did it with the lavender. I did the Scarlet Witch recently. I could have done the pink one if I wanted to, you know, because I had that too. Being a dummy, <laughs> I, I bought pantyhose for my lavender one, wasn't even thinking that I could do the pink one. You know, usually I'm all about using what you already have, but anyway, that's, it's all good. It's all good. I have a lavender Ben Nye. It's just called light lavender, the aqua paint. And then I have my licorice black aqua paint Ben Nye. So uh, that's all I have for makeup um, as far as that goes. And then eyeshadow, I've got my Tamix Revolution palette that I got from Target for like 15 bucks. For the eyeshadow, I'm gonna use this color here and um, 
Of course, I've got my Maybelline waterproof liquid liner and some crazy eyelashes from Kiss. And that's it. I've got my Ben Nye final seal and we're going to go ahead and get started with our makeup. So no matter what Marilyn you do, the shading is going to be the same. Whether you're doing the red flesh tone, the pink flesh tone, the uh, this is the one I, I tend to, to do is the one with the lavender flesh tone. Uh, it's just the one I did last time, so it was the one I, you know, I'm doing again. And uh, you're just gonna, you know, have a photo next to you for reference if you need it, or just be watching my video. <laughs> really plugging that lately, aren't I? <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, just uh, you always have a photo next to you for reference uh, to go ahead and get the, that shading right. And that's what I do, and I just sit it beside me and, and kind of copy off what I see. So let's go ahead and... Uh, get this going obviously first you're gonna want to grab your sponge get your face lavender step number one so I got my sponge here I'm gonna dig right in now this is a little lighter lavender than what what's here but you can definitely tell in the pictures that I'm not flesh tone so we're gonna get that going yeah maybe I should have changed it up with the pink that's okay we'll do it this way perfect this would be a really cool costume to do with a group of girls you can go as all the different colors of Maryland's one one of the and like I said on Etsy even though I'm not a big fan of Etsy they've got the dresses in all different colors like you can get blue I think they have definitely all the primary colors blue yellow green maybe purple all different colors and you can do all the different colors of Maryland and go as that that'd be really cool um if you went with a husband boyfriend or whatever you could be the Maryland or even the Liz Taylor or the Deborah Harry or um the ingrid bergman you know any of the ones that he did and your husband could be our boyfriend could be um any of the men that he did elvis presley john lennon um mick jagger it'd be really cool as a group costume even or if you wanted to be really quirky with a group of friends one of you could be like the campbell soup i'm sure they have a campbell soup costume I didn't really look that up. One of you could be the banana. Even if they have a banana costume and it's just normal, it would be really easy to make it look like the Warhol banana. Um, you just paint on some black, basically. Make it look pop art. It kind of looks white in this light, but it's um, it's lavender, light lavender. It's the same thing I used when I was the fairy. It's just the same as when you're whiting your face, you just are making it lavender this time. Andy Warhol is actually, I would, I could honestly say that he's one of my favorite artists. I've just really, I really admire his use of color. I love pop art because it's so colorful and so bold and so, it's such a statement and his inspiration. It reminds me a lot of me and what I'm inspired by. I decorate my kitchen with, you know, like oils and stuff. If I like the artwork on the, on a jelly or something, I'll put it in my kitchen for decoration. I'll use it eventually, but I always buy the um, Clabber Girl baking soda because I love the artwork on, on the front. It looks cute if it's just sitting in your kitchen, you know, just things like that. And those are things that inspire me. Birds, the way light bounces off the water. Just if I, if I see a picture, I might stare at it for a long time because the shading is mesmerizing. I get inspired by shapes and colors. And he reminds me of that. You know, his artwork is very, it's inspired, but it's like, it's kind of like he lives in his own little world because who would have thought to make a Campbell's soup can and all the different flavors of soup that they had in the 60s and make that a, a thing or you sell it for thousands of dollars. Art is cool. Art is definitely its own thing. And he was, he inspired so much in my opinion. Andy Warhol inspired reality TV with his 15 minutes of fame. You know, he's the one that coined the term, everybody will have their 15 minutes of fame. And it's true, especially today in a world where there's YouTube and social media. Um, I mean, look how famous it made the Kardashians. But his reality TV, back when he had the factory, which was his art studio, which was kind of like a Studio 54, like any celebrity in Hollywood would come to this studio and hang out. And um, he would just sit there and kind of sit back and get inspired by these people. You know, he liked having them around. He admired Hollywood. Um, he loved the beauty uh, of plastic people. 
people that would get plastic surgery to look beautiful. He, he loved that idea. So he'd kind of sit around and get inspired by people that would come to his factory. And he started just taking short, short films, short videos of people doing every, everyday things, frying an egg in the kitchen, or he would take videos of people while they were sleeping and just things that you wouldn't normally think that people would like to watch. And then he'd like put them on the big screen and, and watch them and he'd make series. He, he was very inspired by this girl named Edie Sedgwick. She was a young girl that would come to the factory. She was actually an American actress and model and she'd frequent the factory and he got so inspired by her. She was definitely one of his most notable muses, but he'd just take video of her just doing everyday things, you know, just any little thing. And he named the series Poor Little Rich Girl. Um, now this is back in the 60s, 1965 around there, I believe is when he started these uh, the series. But you know, I just admire his attention to small details, being inspired by every little thing kind of like I am, I really am inspired by so much that surrounds me. Sometimes I feel like I'm just walking around in my own little world and that's very much how Andy Warhol was. Now he was also, um, you know, he did a lot of drugs and stuff, mind altering substances, but you know, I'm sure that that played a role. I don't know, he, he really had some great works. I'm gonna do my eyebrows. I always like starting with my eyebrows. I don't know why, I, th I feel like it frames the rest of the situation. Black for the eyebrows is what I'm using, just a black pencil. And I'm just gonna try and shape them like hers are sheep. I wasn't sure which black pencil I'm gonna use. This one's just LA Colors. It's probably not that great. <laughs> it's not looking like it's that great, but it's okay. It works, so. Well, the shape of your eyebrow can mean a lot, so paying attention to the shape of Marilyn's eyebrow here, it can make you look like her or not. You know, eyebrows are important. <laughs> she has a nice little arch going, so I'm gonna, this was back when more hair on the eyebrows was popular. Remember the 90s, we, we more or less were shaving them off and drawing them on. That was wild, <laughs> wild times. They did that in the 20s too. They did real pencil thin eyebrows. Uh, why am I making stuff harder on myself? I do that sometimes. It's got a little bit out of control there. All right, that's what I'm going for. Just a nice, all right. That's what I'm gonna do the other eyebrow. What you do to one, you gotta do to the other. We learned this in math class. What else is Marilyn known for? Why she's known for her mole. So I'm gonna draw it on with my Maybelline Waterproof Ultra Liquid Liner. All right, there's that. Are we looking Marilyn yet? So in 1962 was when Warhol did his first silkscreen painting. And you know what happened in 1962? Marilyn Monroe passed away. He was very inspired by her loss and wanted to immortalize her in a painting. So he started doing these silk screens and she was the first subject for his, at least his silk screen artwork. So the silk screen method that he used is actually a stenciling method involving printing ink through stencils, which are supported by porous fabric mesh stretched across a frame called a screen. And it became super popular. At that time, he actually sold individual prints for 25,000 a piece. And then he would sell any additional prints for 15,000 a piece. So he made quite a bit of money off of these silk screens. I'm taking that blue that I showed you earlier now and I'm doing my eyelids. They just kind of sweep across, almost going into a cat eye. I got a blue on it, I wasn't blowing. All right, we almost don't want it too blended. Almost want it like hard, a hard line because that's that's just how it was. I'm almost thinking that I might even get my Tahitian blue to do this. I'm not gonna mess with this. I'll just go right over it with the Tahitian blue. Let's see if that works better. I think last time I just used eyeshadow, but I'm coming up with new methods sometimes that work better, especially when I do a costume more than once. I actually wanna do my ears because they'll probably show because I cut the wig short, at least the bottom half. Um, They may not show, we'll see. Hey, at least if they do, I'm covered. You can see the eyeshadow, but it's not super bold. Um, sometimes it's hard to do eyeshadow over the bin eye because it's a, it's a liquid to powder makeup. So it gets real dry powdery and, um, and you know, dry on dry, it just doesn't pick up the color as well. So I'm gonna try something new. Now I've got the Ben Nye Tahitian Blue. I don't know if you can see that. The Ben Nye in Tahitian Blue. Oh, oh yeah. 
Hey, that's perfect. <laughs> you can see just how bold it made that color. So now we've got Ben Nye in lavender, Ben Nye in Tahitian blue, and the licorice black for to achieve this look. And they're only $7 a piece for these. They're not much. And like I said, one of these little things, I mean, depending on if you're, you know, how if you're just a pretty much average size, they'll do your whole body a couple times. Just parts of your body that are showing from your clothes. Um, if you're doing a bigger project or if you're a bigger person, you might want to get the larger size. This is working really well. All right. I got a little under my eye here. That's okay. Because I'll just, if I need to, I can go over it with the, the lavender. And that's what we'll do to touch up. So um, let me see if this one of these will be a little more precise. Like a all right oh yeah that's working pretty good so i said it's kind of going into a cat eye a little bit that's what we're doing yeah yeah girl yeah all right i'm gonna do my other eye you saw just how i did that pinching the sponge just going like that I'm trying to just touch the top but if you touch the bottom that's okay we're gonna go back and touch up the bottom this is great that's exactly what i wanted so i'm gonna finish up i'm just gonna touch it up using uh this i'm gonna wipe off a little bit and then i'm gonna go back over it with the with the lavender just to clean it up a bit this is a great costume for any maryland fans that don't want to just do the typical maryland monroe and the white dress you know if you want to do something a little different this is great you could also do a, a maryland in black and white even you know and there's so many different looks that she had that you can do the diamonds are a girl's best friend it doesn't always have to be the white dress everybody does the white dress do something different be bold it will go over well because who doesn't love marilyn this is the shape you're going for it's all the way in the crease and over into the nose a little bit so i just took my little thingy here and used the round end and did that with the round end you gotta dampen it of course make sure you have a um a paper towel to kind of use you're gonna need one. I've got the other end of my little Q-tippy thingy. She's got a little bit of blue right above her mole because it almost, with the with the silk screen, it almost uh, sh shadows everything, gives everything its own shadow. So I'm just gonna take this little tip here and try to create that little blue dot above the mole. Small details matter on this one because <laughs> it's just every little detail you put is gonna make it that much more accurate, believable. You probably can't see it here. Now we're gonna start shading with the black. This is really what brings it to life. I think I'm gonna do it the way I just did with the blue too on the eye, you know, the little bit that's on the eyes and I'm just gonna do it with my um, my little Q-tip. I think last time I just used eyeshadow. It wasn't as bold and we wanna be bold. So I'm giving you all the best tricks this time. Seeing where we go from here. All right shading it's gonna look crazy at first but when in the pictures it looks really cool i've gone down with the lavender all down my neck all right let's do this actually it's on this side isn't it? you're just following the shading from the picture it's very much kind of just going right around the bone structure And then basically the neck, the top of the neck is black. For the last time I did this, I just couldn't believe how good it looked. Like it looked crazy when I was sitting there doing it. Like, is this going to look right? And then my friend, she snapped a shot of me. And I was like, oh my God, that looks awesome. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't even believe it. It looks crazy when you're just sitting there putting it on. But when you go out and you take pictures like this, it looks so legit and awesome. I think what I did was I, I got the picture here that I'm looking at. See that? It looks cool. It looks so cool. Very cool. So I'm just following the shapes of the shadows in the picture that I'm looking at. That's all I'm doing. I'm not doing anything special. It's, it's very, you just got to pay attention to that kind of stuff. Shapes of shadows and you'll get it. All right. I'm going to just mess this one up a little bit just make it a little messier. It's very grainy too. You don't want like exact lines. You want it to be kind of grainy. So just follow your cheekbones and the natural shape of your face as well. That's the way hers is. So there's really no shading on the forehead here. So um, if you want, there's, she's got a little up near her hairline, but I don't think that's gonna show. The wig is pretty, 
that's pretty much the shading right there. Now there's a little bit of um, just over this eye and some on the other end of the other eye. So, okay, kind of just following. I just took my, you know, my Q-tip here, wet it a little bit. And, and with the black, I'm going kind of curving around this curve with the black. I'm gonna clean it up a little bit. It's okay if it's a little gritty on the ends or if it's not perfect because that's very much how it was. I mean, a silk screen. Imagine paint just falling through a screen that's really um, a really fine mesh. It's not perfect. It's actually very imperfect. So that's where we're going. This one goes into a point, so I'm going to use my pointy end. This one has kind of a point going into the rest of the black. And I am going to do a cat eye and some lashes as well. All right. <clears throat> now we've got the face shaped, and I want to do my nose. Now underneath her nose, it's like completely shaded. So we're going to do that with our Q-tip as well so we can maybe get a finer edge. I think there's a mosquito in my house biting the crap out of me, which I always am a fan of. All right. When you're shading the bottom of your nose, make sure you're kind of getting up into the nostril, you know, because if you just shade the top and the nostril down below is, is not shaded, it's, it's going to look kind of funny. <laughs> so make sure you're getting all of this area. I know it looks weird right now, but trust me on photos, it's going to look really good. Well, you will see. Oh, another associated act of Andy Warhol's was um, the art rock band, the Velvet Underground. You know, I always thought Lou Reed sounded like Bob Dylan, a lot like Bob Dylan. And when I was reading about the band, he actually was highly influenced by Bob Dylan. So it made sense to me that he would be a fan. That was pretty cool to learn. I'd always surmised that he was probably a Dylan fan, but that just kind of solidified what I always thought before. And it's cool to learn because when you can hear those influences yourself and you learn that you were actually right, you feel like you're smart and stuff. The look we're going for, the under the nose shadow. Interestingly enough, I've done some artwork myself. Who isn't inspired by Marilyn Monroe? I mean, she's just the most perfect face. I mean, everybody, every artist wants to do something with Marilyn. But even being an artist and you know, painting. I consider myself to be an amateur artist. Marilyn Monroe was one face I never could quite get right. And I think it's just because she's way too perfect. I usually paint dead people, people that have died, legends, things like that. I've painted Vince Price. I've painted Alfred Hitchcock. People that inspire me, I've painted. But I never could quite get her face right. And I don't know if that's a thing just with me or if, if most artists have that problem with her because everything is just so perfect and it's just really hard to get her right. So now I'm going to do my um, my bit of a cat eye. All of our shading's pretty much there. So I think we're going to start on eyes. I just bought a brand new one that's pretty good. I think this is it. I'm not going to do a real thick cat eye, just something really thin because she doesn't have like a real thick cat eye. So I did also a little part underneath my eye. It's present on both eyes, so I'm gonna do the other one. I did a little bit off camera. I had to charge my uh, my little machine up a little bit. Um, but I just put my winged liner on, put my eyelashes on. For this one, um, you don't really have to get crazy eyelashes. You don't wanna cover up the work that you've done. So I would recommend a smaller than these. This is just what I had, but it, it looks all right. Just like a regular lash would work probably. I wanna do the other one. So I just did two slanted lines and I'm gonna connect them at the bottom and fill it in with the black liquid liner. It's kind of like a shade, the shade of her eyelash is what it is. The shadow coming off her eyelash. Okay, so now that our face is for the most part done, can't forget the red lipstick. I'm gonna put some red lipstick on and then put some black lining in there. I have a lip liner, but I can't find it. I would lip, I would line my lips first for this. If you're still trying to go just outside of your natural lip line. There we go. That looks good. Now, I have my little paper towel. It's got some stuff on it, just makeup, but <laughs> I'm on black. And then I'm gonna put some black lines in there. And the black lines go kind of across the bottom and then across the top in the same way. Almost as if it's um, you're lining now your, your natural lip line just inside that outside line that you created. 
Doesn't matter if you mess up a little bit because like I said, this is a silk screen. Those little imperfections are gonna look perfect. And then little lines coming down off of those initial lines. All right, now all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna finish doing my, my body, my upper body, because I have pantyhose for the bottom, which are a little darker than this lavender that I used for my face, but my face is in my body is up here, you know, the lavender tights are down there. It should look all right. It's gonna be a lot like the Smurfette video where I did the body paint on top and the leggings on the bottom or even my one that I just did, the Scarlet Witch, <laughs> where maybe the colors aren't perfect, but when your upper body, your upper body is kind of in a disconnect because of whatever you're wearing with your legs. So I'm going to paint my upper body, anything that's showing with my lavender body paint. And then I'm going to final seal, Ben Nye final seal um, to seal that on. Um, you want to final seal your face, any, any part of your uh, body that's painted with the body paint. You want to use the, the final seal for that um, if you're going out. Uh, like I said, it doesn't really melt off, but you will get kind of like fingerprints and stuff everywhere. You want the makeup to be sealed on and you don't want to be leaving everywhere looking like a crime scene. So um, anyway, I'm going to do that. I'm going to put my wig on all dressed up and ready for some photos. Thank you so much for joining me again today. I hope you loved this Andy Warhol Marilyn look. It's classic. I know it'll be a big hit. And maybe with some of the other ideas I gave you, uh, you could go out and really have a Andy Warhol Halloween. <laughs> Anyways, that does it for today's ep episode. Please remember to like, subscribe, and share the video. And I'll see you next time.